Hi, welcome to another edition of the Alan Rosenberg Show. Last year at this time, I did a rant video because I was really upset when the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame did their nominations for 2023. And a couple of days ago, they released their nominations for 2024. And it's time for me to do a video. Uh, now I'm not just angry. I'm downright depressed. So let's get into this. Uh, first of all, if you haven't seen it, here is the list. Uh, I don't know. Hopefully you can see this okay. The 2024... Oop, I'm sorry. That's the wrong list. That's the Rap Hall of Fame nominations, apparently. My mistake. Uh, let's try this one. Uh, yep, this is better. Oh, this is... There it is. No! Oh, wait. It's the same list... This is for the 2024 Popular Music Hall of Fame nominations. Nope. Sorry about that. I know I know I got it here somewhere. Ah, here it is. There it is. Uh, the 2024 Rock and Roll Hall of Fame nominations. Mary J. Blige, Mariah Carey, Cher, Dave Matthews Band, Eric B. and Rakim. Foreigner, Peter Frampton, James Addiction, Cool in the Gang, Letty Kravitz, Oasis, Sinead O'Connor, Ozzy Osbourne, Sade, and A Tribe Called Quest. So I was just trying to make a point, obviously, because this list is really not very rock and roll, is it? So, uh, hence why I'm depressed. Uh, there are 15 nominations that you saw here. Hopefully you could see it. 15 nominations, and of those 15... Ten are first-timers. Five are repeats. Uh, so the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame is at a crossroads, clearly. They are pretty much doing a clean slate. Uh, Tribe Called Quest, this is their third nomination. On this list, they are the most previously nominated. And that is people who have been nominated multiple times, but they're not even on this list. No country on this list. You know, Dolly Parton made it last year, Willie Nelson made it, um, and then, of course, Dolly had to make good on it by putting out this ridiculous rock star album. Ah, the state of rock and roll. There, there it is right there in a nutshell. Um, a real surprise for me, actually, was I was sure Jimmy Buffett would have been nominated. Uh, if, only, if anything, for the sympathy vote, because he passed away so suddenly to all of us. I didn't know he was sick. And of course, uh, I don't. I'm not a, the biggest Jimmy Buffett fan, but God, I mean, he's about as big as you can get, and sold a lot of records, and it's got some classics. I, I actually thought they would have been like the sympathy vote, but they didn't even go for Jimmy Buffett. Uh, now, before you say who gives a shit, this the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame is a joke. Well, it's not a joke. Uh, at least it's not a joke to me and to many others, and it shouldn't be a joke to you because if you're a rock and roll fan. And I've been a rock and roll fan since I'm a little kid. Uh, this is the only thing there is for rock and roll. The Rock and Roll Hall of Fame was built for rock and roll. Now, of course, that could have a wide definition. But there's already a country music hall of fame. There's probably a rap hall of fame, and there will be if there isn't. Uh, there's a lot of museums. This is the one and only rock and roll hall of fame. So what the hell is going on? Well, a lot. Uh, and we're going to get into it in this video, so stick with it. Uh, let's go through the 15 nominations. Ozzy Osbourne, uh, listen, he's been eligible for 20 years. Uh, I don't actually have a problem with him. I'm not a huge Ozzy fan. I'm not a huge Black Sabbath fan. But with the help of Sharon Osbourne, big help from Sharon Osbourne, she has made him clearly an institution. And really, if anybody should be a joke, it should be him with all the stuff that he does and the TV commercials and stupid UFO shows and the TV show. Uh, really not very rock and roll, but listen, he's become bigger than Black Sabbath. I mean, and he sells a lot of records and he's got some great albums. I got a bunch of his solo record, so I don't really have a problem with that. Peter Frampton, we're going to talk about Peter Frampton. Uh, I am a huge Peter Frampton fan. And in fact, uh, I've been sticking with Peter Frampton since day one, since I got into him when Frampton Come, Comes Alive came out in 76. And when his uh, career was in the toilet and he couldn't even get signed, I was still sprouting how great he is. So, um, But with that said, is his career really Hall of Fame worthy? We'll get into that. 
Uh, why is Frampton on there now? I'll tell you why. It's the sympathy boat. He's sick. He did his farewell tour. Said he would never play again. Played the biggest places he's played since the late 70s. Uh, played the Garden and the LA Forum. Sold him out because he did the farewell tour and instantly he's touring again. But listen, no doubt he is not well. He has to sit and uh, you can still see him live when he plays locally. Uh, he's been eligible for like 25 years. Cher, eligible for like 30 years. This is her first nomination. Uh, listen, I remember when I was a kid uh, listening to Gypsies, Tramps, and Thieves and Half Breed. And uh, I mean, she's clearly an icon. Uh, is she rock and roll? Well, I guess when she was with Greg Allman and Allman and Woman, terrible album. But I actually thought she was in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. So uh, that's an interesting choice. Sinead O'Connor. You know, she passed away last year. Uh, she had a lot of mental illness. You know, she really had that one huge album with Nothing Compares to You, which was written by Prince. Tore up the photo of the Pope and kind of destroyed her career, which was a kind of a very rock and roll move. But is she really rock and roll Hall of Fame worthy? Not, not to me. Dave Matthews, huge artist. Interesting to see him there. Um, he had been previously nominated in the past, huge in the U S I have never been a fan. I find him nothing but an annoyance, but I could appreciate how big he is and, uh, surprised to see him there. I, I wouldn't choose him, but that's just me. Mariah Carey. I think Whitney Houston is in the hall of fame. Well, if Whitney Houston's in there, then Mariah Carey's got to be in there, but clearly not rock and roll to me. I, I actually can't stand her, but great voice. Uh, Mary J. Blige, her second nomination. Listen, I couldn't tell you her music. I'm not qualified to judge. Is she Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? Well, she's certainly Popular Music Hall of Fame, which is what the hall has now become. Sade, interesting, her first nomination. Sade is a band, but it's really hard. I'm actually a big fan. I think she's wonderful. I think she's a massive talent. The band is great. I love listening to them. They're great live. She's great live. Would I put her in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? Well, not over some of the people that are missing, but that's an interesting choice. Foreigner, their first nomination, kind of surprised. Um, to me, Foreigner is a really good rock band from, you know, the late 70s, 80s. I'll show you the, well, I could show you now. What the hell is the difference? So here's Foreigner and their big output, you know, the, uh, the first Foreigner album and, uh, Double Vision, and Head Games, and Four, and Agent Provocateur. Fine records, some of them are great. A lot of great songs. They were one of the biggest selling artists on Atlantic Records for a long time. Are they Hall of Fame worthy? Are they worthy over some of the other artists that are not in? Not to me. Um, Tribe Called Quest. Um, nothing to me. Uh, Eric B. and Rakim, the two rap artists uh, with prior nominations. I think Eric B. was nominated like 12 years ago. I couldn't tell you a single song. Are they worthy over the great rock bands that are not in there? Not to me. Uh, Oasis, interesting choice because obviously the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame is so U.S. centric. And Oasis, one of the biggest, most important bands in British music ever. You know, here's there, definitely, maybe, and what's the story, morning glory, and be here now, and the master plan, standing on the shoulders of giants, live record, heathen chemistry, don't believe the truth, box sets, dig out your soul, time flies, listen, you know, one of the biggest bands of all time over there. And I'm a big fan of Britpot. You know, to me, you're going to put Oasis in, you got to kind of put Blur in as well. Um, and then you can get into Suede and Pulp and all these are great, great, great legendary uh, bands from, you know, uh, that time. But Oasis, the biggest of all of them for sure. And Nebworth, and uh, I don't have a problem with them getting in. They're so rock and roll. Cool and the Gang, well, to me, that's like the Spinners. Come on, seriously. Lenny Kravitz, does, I like Lenny Kravitz. I think he's good. Do I think he's a great artist? You know, does he have a discography like these bands that are that are not in there? Not in my 
opinion. But I also call Lenny Lenny Kravitz to me is like Dave Grohl and Cheryl Crow. They know how to play the game. They got to be at every award show, every event. They're there. They know how to get their name out there. And they're popular and they're talented and they have a high profile. So that will get you eventually in the Hall of Fame. Would I put Lenny Kravitz in? Not, in a, not yet. Jane's Addiction, uh, I'm not a fan, but they certainly were influential. Lollapalooza. And they were kind of a precursor to like certain grunge, Nirvana. But would I put them in? What do they have, like two or three albums? Definitely not. Not over the bands that are missing. So it's an interesting... Kind of a wide-ranging nomination, and I can kind of take my hat off to the Hall of Fame. But really, none of them, to me, is, like, exciting. You know, and not even really rock and roll. And I could list, and I will list at the end, these artists that are not in there. Number one right there, Jethro Tull. Let's go right to it. How Jethro Tull is not in the Hall of Fame is criminal, and... Gets me so damn angry. This is not even all their album, but these are a box set for each one of these albums. I mean, look at that. That's an incredible body of work, and they got stuff after that. Um, Ian Anderson is a genius, as far as I'm concerned, but he doesn't play the game. He's nasty. He's prickly. He doesn't give a shit, so he says, about the Hall of Fame, and he's never going to get in because of that. But how is that not in? Blue Oyster Cult. Not as good as Tall, in my opinion, but this is a box set of all their albums. And there's classics in there. Never nominated. You know, is Foreigner over Blue Oyster Cult? Well, not to me, but I guess they sold more records. I don't know. Listen, I'm a huge Peter Frampton album fan, like I told you, right? And he's got a lot of really good records. I mean, I think he should be in for Frampton Comes Alive alone, but here's when to change. And Frampton's Camel. Um, something's happening, right? Frampton Comes Alive. My choice for the greatest live album of all time. Breaking All the Rules. Premonition. I have everything Frampton's ever done. I got him on vinyl, not everything on CD. Here's more. Let's see some more. Now. Uh, this is a uh, premonition again. Uh, when all the pieces fit, shine on. The self-titled, that's the acoustic one, and there's a self-titled album. And uh, Fanta Comes Alive too. And then there's Now. There's Now, over here. Let's keep going. He's got a lot of albums, Peter Frampton, right? I mean, this is quite that. Live in Detroit. Now. Here's Now. Fingerprints, Grammy nominated, right? 35 Live, Acoustic Classics, thank you Mr. Churchill, All Blues, Hummingbird in a Box, Forgets All the Words, what else I got down there, stuff that's not on CD, where I should be, I'm in you. He's got quite the discography. I'm a huge fan, but it's pretty much a spotty discography. You know, uh, how many albums are there are perfect albums? Not too many, but if you take the best songs from each of them, yeah, you got quite quite the history. Same thing with Grand Funk. Same thing with a lot of the other artists that I'll mention that are not in there. Bad Company. I mean, so what's going on with the Hall of Fame with getting away from rock music? Well, for one thing, it's no longer about the Hall of Fame, is it? The Hall of Fame was a building that they decided to put up in memory of the greatest, most important rock artists of all time. And then it became a TV show. And it's become like the Grammys or the MTV Music Awards or the People's Choice Awards or the American Music Awards. Um, it's about the extravaganza. It's about the ratings. It's not about rock bands playing, and we know that rock music is pretty much dead right now, right? I mean, you saw the Super Bowl yesterday. Um, so what do they got to have? They got to have diversity. They got to have inclusion. They got to have popularity. You know, my wife was yelling at me, put Jethro Tull in the, in the award show. Nobody's going to watch it. Nobody even remembers who Jethro Tull are, even though they sold out stadiums and Chase Stadium and sold out Madison Square Garden umpteen times and have these great... Box sets and albums and what a history. 
doesn't matter. Nobody's going to watch it. But that's not what the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame is supposed to be about. It's supposed to be a memorial for Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, not about ratings and selling commercial time and who's currently hot. But that's what it's become, and that's a big problem. Look what happened with Kate Bush, right? Kate Bush never had a chance, right? I'm a big Kate Bush fan. I didn't have a, I didn't have a problem with her getting in. She would never even be nominated. She's not even known in America. But that, that TV show Stranger Things does, puts on running up that hill and all of a sudden becomes a number one hit in America. Lo and behold, Kate Bush gets nominated and gets put in. And thank God Kate Bush didn't even, she didn't even go to the show. Could care less. She knew it was all bullshit. Let's talk about the Go-Go's. How did the Go-Go's get in? Listen, I think Beauty and the Beat is one of the greatest debut albums of all time. It's actually a perfect album. But after that, it's kind of eh. Anybody talk about the Go-Go's talk show or a vacation or God Bless the Go-Go's? Nobody cares. Um, it was that first album. But why did they get in that year? Well, why? Do you remember why? Because they had a Broadway show all of a sudden. The Go-Go's were all over the place. They reformed. They were on TV shows. They were getting interviewed. People are going to watch the award show because the Go-Go's are going to be there. Let's get them in. Should the Go-Go's be in there in the Hall of Fame? Not from one great album when you have all these other artists that have huge discographies of more than one great album and tons more great songs or legendary songs. doesn't make sense, but it was about the ratings, right? Maybe I would put the Go-Go's album Beauty and the Beat in the Hall of Fame. Maybe they should have just great albums, you know? But it's not just about popularity, right? Because if it was, well, the Gogos had the one great album. Where's Boston? How could you not have the Boston first album in there? Cindy Lauper, people would say. She's so unusual. Great first album. Maybe you put that in the Hall of Fame. Um, but their careers are pretty spotty after that, right? Um, but it's not all about commercial success. Velvet Underground is in the Hall of Fame, and they should be. They got four really important, and in my opinion, four classic albums. i got to do a video on them. But certainly they should be in there, even though when the Velvet Underground were around, their four albums combined probably sold, you know, nothing. They sold nothing. They were playing clubs in front of 100 people when they were still around. Lou Reed left in the middle of a tour. Nobody was seeing them. Then that was during Loaded. So, you know, but they deserve to be in it. A Sex Pistols, one great album, but they changed rock and roll at that time, you know, for sure. Huge influences, you know, The Clash, The Ramones. You know, they didn't sell lots of records at that time. They do over time now, but they certainly deserve to be there in there for influence. There's also a flip side, you know. Um, you know, who decides? Is Rock and Roll Hall of Fame supposed to be elitist and say only bands like The Velvet Underground should be in there? But there's plenty of artists that sold billions of records in 30, 40 year careers. You know, Bon Jovi or Kiss, you know, on the face of it, should they be in there? Well, you know, I'm not a big Bon Jovi fan, but it, what he pulled off after hair metal and still one of the biggest bands in the world, worldwide even, you know, who am I to say they shouldn't be in because they're kind of popular uh, or Kiss? You know, I like some of a lot of kiss you know but i don't take them seriously but what a career you know so you can't be elitist either um you know and then where i come in is like well if you're going to put people in with one great album then you have artists that are in, have a lot of inconsistent albums but over time their their body of work if you cherry pick you know their best stuff it's, it's huge and that's where you get into like grand funk and peter frampton and, you know, other artists that have these grand funk, uh, did I mention I said grand funk, Blue Oyster Cult's another one. There's a bunch, huge discographies where if you cherry pick, you know, listen, you throw on the best of Blue Oyster Cult, the best of grand funk, it's as good as the best of, you know, almost most bands, certainly most that are in the Hall of Fame, you know, it's just that it's spread out over longer. So then you're rewarding a body of work. Um, Uriah Heep. You know, there's just a lot of them. I, bad company. Wishbone Ash for me. Um, you know, these great bands over decades. Um, so it's not easy for the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. But what they've done 
it's not about the music anymore. It's about the show and the entertainment and the ratings because they, pe they want people to watch their award show. And that's where you get these artists, you know, that Eric B. and Rakim and A Tribe Called Quest and Mary J. Blige and Mariah Carey, you know, and, you know, Sinead O'Connor. You know, does Sinead O'Connor's discography compare to this? You know, no, come on. It's not even close. Share, uh, that's like... I guess she should be in there, you know, she's such an icon, but she's not rock and roll, but she's a lot more rock and roll than Dolly Parton. She was ridiculous, in my opinion. So, it's depressing, and I got depressed watching the Super Bowl halftime show last night, because I realized there's no rock bands that could play the Super Bowl anymore, that, that haven't played the Super Bowl. So you bring out, like, Usher, and I watched it, and I promise you, I really try to keep an open mind. And he's up there lip-syncing, and it's a huge spectacle. And I guess ever since MTV and Michael Jackson and Janet Jackson, that's what, what happened about the choreography and this effects. And they don't have to sing, and they don't really have to. They're not really singing, and there's no band that's really playing. And it's all canned music, but what an extravaganza. But I watched Usher. And at least for my taste, I was like, was there a single good song? Is there a single memorable song? Yeah, I guess they're hits. But it's like the quality of hits today, I never thought this would happen. You know, growing up, I always said I'm so blessed that rock music that I love translates to my kids. I have a 30-year-old and a 25-year-old, and they have, they have big record collections, and they listen to the music that I listen to, plus the music that they know. But the music I listen to, they still think is great. You know, it crosses over. But it doesn't anymore because it doesn't get any exposure. You know, I work with young people. They don't even... I, I saw U2 at the Sphere. They didn't know who U2 was. They had heard of the Rolling Stones, but they didn't know any songs. They don't know who Pink Floyd, Dark Side of the Moon is. I'm like, how could you not know that? There's like no history because it's all about streaming and this extravaganzas. And they're just... It's, it's changed. And now it's got to the point where rock is dead. And I don't know what they're going to do about it. Um, somebody's got to do something about this. But the answer is not putting Tribe Called Quest in and Eric B. and Rakim and Cool in the Gang and Mariah Carey and Mary J. Blige and Sinead O'Connor in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, you want to put those people in, you can do that at some time, but, you know, Emerson, there's genres of music, Emerson, Lake, and Palmer was a huge band, Blur, if you're going to put Oasis in, you got to put Blur in, and where's the jam? Well, that's a British band, not pretty much unknown in America, and Bad Company and Free, and Warren Zevon, maybe Little Feet, and I'm not a fan at all, but how could Iron Maiden is a legendary heavy metal band. It's huge to this day. I don't like them, but that's not the point. You know, I love the Jay Giles band, you know, and don't think just freeze frame. That's my least favorite Jay Giles. Um, you know, Mata Hoople and Ian Hunter. Well, certainly Ian Hunter. I think Ian Hunter is better than Mata Hoople. Go shoot me. Uh, I'm not the biggest fan, but the Grateful Dead is in there. You need to have Fish in there. I mean, Fish is, these are huge bands that sell a lot of records and are cultural institutions. They are big rock bands. I mean, huge. Um, you know, there's parts of Southern rock that's ignored. You know, you have the Allman Brothers, certainly, and Leonard Skinner's in there, right? I think Leonard Skinner's in there. They should be, but where's the Outlaws? And, uh, Marshall Tucker, and for me, the Charlie Daniels band, definitely. Uh, and then there's all these British bands that are so influential and big overseas. Maddox Street Peaches, Suede, uh, Status Quo. I mean, these are legendary rock bands. Get them into the Hall of Fame somehow, and then you can put these other people in. There's my rant, and I would love to know your thoughts. Um... Something's got to be done because rock is dead and we can't let it die. You know, my little channel, 
I'm trying to expose the music that I love, that I've been listening to for 50 years. I don't have any sponsors. Nobody's ever going to be able to sell me. Trust me. Uh, this is me. And I'm not saying I know, but I know what I love. And, and typically what I like is really good. I think so. So I'm trying to expand it to other people so you could enjoy real music. And I know I sound like an old white guy, but it's not a racial thing. You know, it's not. It's nothing about race. You know, rock and roll was started with Chuck Berry and Bo Diddley and Little Richard. Hell, my favorite band, the Rolling Stones, is two-fifths African-American now. I mean, they're not official members in the band, but Daryl Jones has been in the band, Logan and Bill Wyman, and Steve Jordan will be in there for the rest of their... And there's no problem with that. They're, they're right for the band. Race has no matter in it. It's about the music and the type of music. And that's all I'm saying. So I'd love to know your thoughts. Um, yeah, uh, it's very upsetting to me. Thanks for watching. Stay safe. Stay healthy. Check out my other videos. I have a playlist. You can go to Rant. That's where this one is. You'll see my one from last year and other Rant videos as well. But this is a sad state of affairs for rock music. And before it's completely gone, something has to change.